Okay, Cupcakes, we're back again, and I'm at home now doing intro. I didn't like doing it at the school too much. It was uncomfortable. But we're back with intro, which is Law and Ethics, intro three, week two. And I think we left off on the page that starts with consents. I think we stopped right here under telling you what consents were. And if we didn't, I'm sorry. Okay, we'll, we'll cover it. Consent. Any doctor who fails to obtain a signed consent form before treatment could be charged with battery. Remember the illegal touching. You could be charged with it too. Not, I mean, it would be really hard to prove it, but if you don't get the patient's name and a little permission, I'm gonna do your vital signs, okay? Mm -hmm, sure, that's it, that's all you need. All right, different types of consents. Now there's more than what's listed here. Um, I just want you to know that. I'm going to go over some of the other ones just so you know them. Implied consent is highlighted, and that is also known as presumed consent, okay? Presumed consent. It's the one I was just telling you about. As simple as asking a patient's permission before taking their vital signs. Or to call when the call, patient calls you for an appointment and they've never seen a doctor before, they're implying that they would like to see your doctor, okay? Expressed consent. Now, we're going to get a little more long as we go. This is a general consent. It's given after the patient is asked, may I do your health history? It kind of goes with implied, expressed. Then we get to informed consent. Informed consent. You cannot explain this consent to the patient. This consent would include a medical or dental procedure that needs to be done. The other two, there may not be a procedure that needs to be done other than vital signs, temperature, pulse, respiration, and blood pressure. But this involves a little more getting into it. So you cannot explain it. Even though you've seen it by, done by the doctor hundreds of times, you know what it is, you know how it's done, but you still can't explain it to the patient. Now, this is done for more complex procedures, and failure to obtain a permission is a crime of battery, and the full explanation of the procedure with the discussion of the patient's diagnosis, that's what DX, if known. Now, this is what the doctor needs to be able to inform the patient of. Number one, the risks and benefits of the procedure. You know, you have impacted wisdom teeth. The risks are it's only gonna get worse. You know, the benefit is once we take them out, your mouth has a lot more room and, and you won't be in so much pain. The second one is a reasonable alternative to the procedure. Now, what a reasonable alternative to having a wisdom tooth extracted is, I don't know, but if they have one, I'm sure your doctor would be able to explain it to the patient and let them know, look, if you don't want this done, we can get you a splint or something, or whatever it is. And finally, <clears throat> the doctor needs to be able to explain the risks and benefits of not performing the procedure. Look, the risk of the procedure, you're gonna have to undergo anesthesia. There's always a risk when anesthesia is involved, all right? Um, but if we don't do this, like I said before, it's only going to get worse. This is what the doctor needs to be able to explain because if the patient has questions, the doctor can do it. If you do this one, you are practicing medicine without a license and they're gonna come get you, all right? And like I said, there are other consents um, or different types of damages. We're gonna get into that in just a few minutes. All right, uh, let's see, the adult patient and this is the adult who is found by the court to be insane. That's me, me. Or incompetent, not me, cannot consent to a medical procedure or treatment in most states. If the adult has been deemed insane or incompetent in any way. And look, I, I wanna go back and, and take that back what I said because it's a mental illness. And mental illness is no different than a physical illness. You have symptoms, it's got a name, and go to the doctor, they can help. Just as if you had gallbladder problems or a hot appendix, 
you have symptoms, you go to the doctor, you explain, they take care of it. So there's a stigma put on mental illness. You know, a lot of people just suffer from depression. Depression is a mental illness. I don't know if you know that or not, but it is. It's a form of mental illness. Who hasn't been depressed in their life? All right, we're going to move on now. <clears throat> Roman numeral two, AIDS and HIV. All 50 states, and I mean all of them. I don't know about the territories that we have, like Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic and Haiti, all that. I don't know about those places. But all, <clears throat> excuse me, 50 United States of America require the reporting of confirmed cases <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> of acquired immunodeficiency syndrome to the local health department. Now, it can be pronounced as acquired, oh, they're always, acquired immunodeficiency, or it can also be pronounced as acquired immuno is one part of the word, deficiency is another word, okay? So it can be either way, but it's the same thing. And AIDS is a virus, it, HIV, okay? It is a virus, just like we're fighting right now with this COVID. The thing with viruses, they mutate, they change constantly. If you think you found a medicine today that works on it, tomorrow it's gonna change so that medicine does not work on it, all right? But all 50 states require that any confirmed cases be reported to the local health department. That's how even with this COVID, it has to be reported. How do you think every night they can bombard you in the new, on the news? I won't let my husband watch it because he makes me go cuckoo. Every time they mention COVID-19, COVID-19, he goes crazy. But every case has got to be reported. That's how they can tell you at night. Uh, Louisiana had 1,700 cases between yesterday and today. Um, 1,500 people are on ventilators. You think they're just pulling those numbers out of thin air? No, it's got to be from being reported to the local health department, all right? Now, listen to this one. B, the patient's written consent does not have to be obtained by the doctor before HIV testing is done. So what I said, written consent, and there's an extra C in consent, take it out. Written consent does not have to be obtained by the doctor before HIV testing is done. Now, if you, the healthcare worker, have an accidental exposure, which is a needle stick or bodily fluids, HIV testing can be done on the patient with even out, without their even informed consent. If you have an exposure incident, Ladies, I cannot explain to you enough about being careful. Medical assistants, they give injections and they may be drawing blood, but you on a daily basis, almost on an hourly basis, you're gonna be working with the doctor, with the dentist, in very close, I keep doing this, because you're gonna be in very close proximity to each other, standing right over the patient with the tray of instruments right here, and you're gonna be passing them back and forth. And please be careful because most doctors don't work with blunt instruments, all right? They work with sharps, and that's what the nickname for needle, I mean, for um, the needles or scissors are. Do you have any sharps, okay? And there's different types of sharps, curved sharps, blunt sharps, all different kinds. Please be careful, all right? Because even though you can go get tested, why put yourself through that? All right, an emancipated minor, oh. This is a self-supporting, not bad, 16-year-old living separate from the parents or the, legal, or the legal guardian. This kid's taking care of himself. He's supporting himself, not living with his parents or legal guardian, all right? That is an emancipated minor. That's what the Gary Coleman became, an emancipated minor. Remember I told you about that one yesterday? All right. Confidentiality, oh Lord, I can't stress this enough. 
that is the most sacred trust a patient places in the doctor or the doctor's staff. Now, it applies to everything. And I mean everything. It applies to information that's in the patient's records or chart. Anything you are told by the patient, zip it. The thing between your nose and your chin, zip it. Minors requesting confidential services. Now let me explain something to you. You used to date John Doe. And y'all had we all were going together for years. Then you had a big breakup because he started fooling around with Jane Doe. Not, not related. And you all had a big, big, big breakup. All right? And uh, bad blood between you. Well, you're working for your, your dentist. And guess who walks in a few months later? Nobody other than Jane Doe. Now, you have the lowdown on this girl. You know a lot about her. Or you have heard a lot that stuff people have made up about her and presented it as true, all right? You can't open your mouth. I know it is almost physically impossible, so you pray a lot. Lord, give me the strength not to do that. You, I mean, you will really, and especially somebody in that situation, they're just looking to get back at you for something you did, okay? Even though they took the guy away from you, they're looking to get back at you for something. So please, you cannot go or pull your friend or co-worker aside. You see that? That's the Jane Doe that took my boyfriend, and she's got herpesipagana scabs, which is no such disease. My son made that up. But please, you can't do that, all right? No, 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 no. Okay, disabilities. Disabilities, medical and public facilities, which most medical facilities are, must allow those with disabilities easy and safe. Now, there's three things that have to be allowed. Entry and exit to the building. They've got to be ramps to accommodate wheelchairs. Access to move freely from floor to floor. You've got to have some sort of elevator in there. I have never yet seen a wheelchair that can manage the steps. It's not going to happen. Plus, they have to have access to drinking fountains, which means they may have to be lower, a regular height and then a lower height, all right? And if you look around the city of New Orleans, you'll notice that on the neutral ground or the median, whatever you call it, when you get to the end of it, there's, they've taken and they've slanted up this part of the neutral ground and slanted it down over here. Well, they both go up. So you can go up here, go across the neutral ground, and then go back down. Because before, it was like a four-inch step. Look, I've had six back surgeries and three hip replacements. I know from whence I speak. And we went to a little bitty town, San Francisville. It's a beautiful little town, like old, old, old kind of stuff. They've never heard of disability access there because we wanted to go into one of the little old shops. To get up on the curb was eight inches. I can't do two inches. I, I have trouble getting up on the step at work, at school, so you know what I'm talking about. I, I mean, it was terrible. So, and let me tell you something. These laws are not set by OSHA. Make sure you know that. These are set by the Americans with Disabilities Act, okay? That's who has set these laws. Now, ethical decision making. It's called being in a quandary. A quandary is, I don't know if I should do it or if I shouldn't do it. Should I say something or not say something? That's known as a quandary. And I don't want to see you have to be in one of those situations. Ethical decision making has basically five steps to them, all right? The first step is you have to gather all the relevant information. Now, relevant information means just the stuff that's important, not all the superfluous little, well, she said this and she said that. No, 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 no. The facts and only the facts. That's all you want to find out first. The second thing is to identify what type of ethical problem is it. Is it a breach in confidentiality? Is it theft? And theft can happen in a doctor's office. 
people have to pay co-pays, and sometimes they'll pay it with cash, okay? And you never know. Don't put anything past anybody. So you have to find out what type of ethical situation is this. Then you have to determine, now that you got that, okay, then you have to determine what ethical approach are you going to use. How are you going to handle this ethically? That's the key word. Finally, you're going to, exp I mean, not finally, but close to then, you're going to explore practical alternatives. In other words, other ways that this situation could be handled. And I know all this sounds like a lot, but we do this in about five minutes. You, you, you've done this before, many, many, but you ever sat there and said, hmm, let me gather all the information first, okay? And then let me identify what to, no. We have been trained, and if you're a human of any age, you've almost got this down to where you can do it in your sleep, all right? You know you can't, like if the kids come to you and they're both saying they did the same thing, and then they're both saying, I didn't do it. You know you gotta find out first the important information. What type of problem do we have, all right? Um, it, are they hitting each other or are they telling fibs on each other, all right? What is the ethical approach to use? You don't just go and smack all of them, and that's not it. Explore what else could be done, and finally, complete the action. Do something about it, all right? Do something about it. And again, I know this seems like big t -t oh, Ollie, I don't want to do all that. We do it every day without even realizing we do it. All right, ethical issues. Here we go. If you think the employer, your boss, is taking part in unethical behavior, the first course of action is to be absolutely, totally, completely, 110 gazillion percent sure of the facts and circumstances. Don't just hear something and go off half cock. <gasps> Guess what I heard? Da -da -da -da. No. Look it up for yourself. And I don't mean just Google, all right? Find out the facts. And I'm going to show you why at the end because you can be in big trouble. Second, if you believe the patient is being abused by the family, by a home, if you think the patient's being abused, the first person that you should report it to is your supervisor, all right? Report it to your supervisor if you think this is what's happening. Next one, if you think the patient's safety is at risk, you are still not legally responsible for reporting any provider's actions to local authorities and medical boards. If you think the patient's safety is at risk, you're not legally responsible, but I think ethically you may want to consider if you've gotten all the facts and you are 110 gazillion percent sure, okay? All right, you uh, here, you may have to discuss ethical, I'm sorry, some states, some states prosecute people for false reports. That's what I was telling you. Be absolutely, completely, 110 gazillion percent sure of the facts before you do anything because they could sue. Everybody, look, you got more. For one, in one afternoon, from three to six, I don't care what channel you own, if you're watching TV, I'd like you to count how many attorney commercials you see. You'd be surprised. Letter E, um, you may have to discuss ethical issues with the patients. Now, patients can bring up ethical issues and they can ask your position on it. Do not interject or do not impart your personal views, only your professional views. Well, according to the literature and according to what I have read, this procedure is 99% safe. That's the professional way. Or, honey, I wouldn't have that done by this guy, Pop. You just blew it. Okay, you put in your personal, personal, no, you got to keep it professional. And local governments are the ones that create and enact ordinances. We went over that before. Now, insurance. 
In 2010, President Obama enacted the Affordable Care Act. And what that does is a lot of things, but one of them, it prohibits discrimination against children with pre-existing conditions. I mean, my grandson, I call him, like, I, Eric and Iris, I call him Dinosaur. He was diagnosed with cancer when he was five. Do you realize before this, no insurance company in the world would take him for the rest of his life? Oh, are you kidding? You're, you've had cancer? No, 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 no. Uh -uh. But now they have no excuse. They have got to take him, all right? Because on the face it, he's been cured. Well, we can't say cured because with his type, he had neuroblastoma. We can only say there's NED, no evidence of disease. And thank you, Lord, it's been that way. All right, letter B, the routine, and now listen to this, this involves you maybe, the routine, oh, waiver of insurance copay may violate policies of insurance companies. And doctors who routinely do this may be violating insurance company rules. Oh, don't worry about the copay. We'll take, oh, don't worry about it. Let the insurance company get wind of that and find out that you're doing that doctor can be in a whole lot of trouble, all right? Finally, and this is a big one, the prime objective of the medical or healthcare profession is to render service to humanity. You must have to like people and want to help people in order to be in this field. Ladies, I'm telling you, if you're in this for the money, you will not make it if you're going to be a nurse because they make a lot of money you will not make it you have got to love what you do just like i do i love what i do or i wouldn't have been doing it for 20 some odd years okay at the same place i just you all are the ones that get me up in the morning all right so that's about it for today Please work on those reviews or worksheets, the one for pre-med and the one for intro. Oh, and I want to let y'all know, next Wednesday at 8 o'clock, next Wednesday, I don't remember the date, next Wednesday at 8 o'clock, um, we're going to try and meet at school so we can do the checkoff on um, electronic medical records. Oh, well, let's see. Next Wednesday, I don't want to get the date wrong. Next Wednesday, I think, is the... 22nd, I think, I think, I'm not sure. Don't, I'll, I'll have to find out and I'll text you about it because I don't want to do the wrong thing. But next Wednesday, okay, whatever that date is, I'll find out and let you know. And um, so we're going to go over those worksheets tomorrow and I will have the right date. And Kenya, I pray to God you got the notes today, okay? I don't know why you didn't get them the first time, but I re-emailed them to you. All right, baby? All right, love y'all and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.